Hello everyone, this is Bradley. Today this is a voice recording to do this uh, Raspberry Collision animation in Blender 4.0. Uh, there are a lot of background story and the failure and the frustration. So the end mechanics is not as fantastic as you may think. But at least we can do this animation, just like in Houdini. So let's start. So here we're in Blender, and I've already made a closed simulation of an icosphere, which looks like this. Okay, uh, but uh, as simulation part is quite important, I'm going to briefly discuss how to set up it. So let's turn off the force, and I will keep the collider on. Let's create an icosphere. The reason I do not use the soft body um, is that uh, if I add a soft body directly to this icosphere, you will find that I cannot add a subdivision surface to it. Uh, the soft body has to be on top or actually on button because it says cannot move above a modifier requiring original data, whatever. So. Yes, for some reason it just doesn't work and you have to do a lot of things and so on and so forth. It's not less procedural, which I don't like. So I add a clause simulation so that you can put a clause after this subdivision surface. So that it's more procedural to tweak some values if you do not like the subdivision surface. But we're going to keep that low poly. I think it's working fine. But now uh, there are several settings I changed. One is I deleted the gravity mostly. So, uh, yes, basically it looks like this. Uh, by default, this clause simulation will basically crush your object. Uh, so we add an internal spring to make it more rigid. Now this is too rigid, so we we'll turn down this compression force. If I turn off this compression force, you can see it basically crush. Maybe we can turn off this tension as well. Uh, there are lots of settings that you can tweak. Uh, I actually don't really know all these settings. I'm not an expert in uh, in simulation, and uh, I hate working with simulation. Uh, maybe I can turn off this compression too. Okay, it becomes a little bit better. Maybe we can increase the bending too. Anyway, there are so many things that you can tweak, but it's not relevant to this particular case. You just get a kind of rough idea and you add some force. This is basically just the winds. I turn the number because I find if you do not turn on the number, it does not really work. So for our new icosphere, you see it, it's crushed because of our winds, which looks cool, but I don't want it to happen with our raspberry. So let's add a little bit of compression. Yes, so if you add a little bit of compression, it becomes more rigid while it retains a kind of a soft body like behavior. And we are going to slow this movement down, like maybe 0 0.2, to have a kind of slow motion effect because I want to show how the deformation actually occurs in our setup. So, this is the basic concept. Next, let's uh, create a geometry node tree to instance this icosphere. So let's go to nodeing. Uh, I added a geometry node tree, and for the moment, I'm going to disable this cross simulation. I probably disable this icosphere as well. Uh, let's just uh, shift D to copy uh, in case I want to roll back. Okay, anyway, so let's. I have this icon. Geometry nodes node tree. I'm going to use the preset which you can download for free from the link in the description. So I take a point distribute and I need a grid. Why this displays ID? Uh, let's get a grid. The reason I need this preset is it's really well defining the amount of points you basically have compared to the points distributes on phase, in which you generate billions of particles and you have no idea how to decrease the count 
to a level that you can accept. Okay. Uh, especially we are running a soft body simulation, you don't want to crush your computer with too many particles. And then I'm just going to rotate it 90 degrees. Something like that. So you instance something and we put the point instance. And let's take a, an icosphere. Icosphere. And let's increase the subdivision. We see there are some points which are overlapping to each other. We you can remove that in Poisson mode. So let's just increase the count a little bit. Uh, take the Poisson distance. Uh, something like that should be fine. Uh, we can also turn on a little bit about random radius if it's acceptable. Uh, but I don't want to worry about it now because it will make my life a little bit easier. So now we have this uh, icosphere. Uh, let's decrease the subdivision. Uh, maybe increase it to 3 should be acceptable. And then we run this clause simulation. I can hide this initial icosphere. Let's run this clause simulation. And it says cannot initialize clause. There are several reasons. We are, uh, we are working with instance. So we need to realize instance to make points accessible. So now they are accessible and they don't have self collision. So we go to our clause simulation and collision, self collision. So now we have something like that. It, it looks like kind of a rubbish bag, whatever stuff. Um, looks kind of very ugly, but it's fine. Uh, we can actually bake this simulation already. I don't need uh, too much amount. Let's just uh, take 250 or even 100 should be fine. Uh, and I also need to decrease the speed. Jesus Christ, where's my software body. Oh yes, maybe a little bit slower. Okay, uh, this is a pretty cheap simulation for the moment. Uh, let's just, where's the bake? Why it's so at the button? Uh, let's just uh, bake about 100 frames. And it's very fast, we baked it. Okay, fine. Uh, it doesn't really finish, but you can do that uh, in your free time. Uh, then we just uh, instance uh, our Raspberry. Where is my Raspberry? Okay, I have my Raspberry, yes. And then we basically instance my Raspberry to the same location. There are many different ways to do it. But the uh, several problems is that you firstly need to make sure that our ROS Raspberry instance. Uh, firstly, you need to make sure our Raspberry instance is, uh, how should I say, mm, has a synchronized instance location as our icosphere. So I need to lock this interface and I turn on the other node tree. So I need to inst uh, synchronize these values together. So I basically put this icosphere outside and I select this node and control G to group them together. So that's, uh, I can use this synchronized, synchronized instance to our Raspberry because the value is being shared in this group node. So I take a synchronized instance. So now I have yet. But you realize it's not an instance yet exact same location. This is because for our Raspberry uh, their transformation is different. So we constraint, copy transform. And we select icosphere and we hit influence. 
so that this constraint is no longer really working. And uh, basically, we apply the transformation. Uh, right now, I noticed several problem. One is that uh, our uh, Raspberry is too big, but also another thing is uh, these icosphere are essentially still intersecting to each other. So maybe we want to turn a little bit up the Poisson value. And uh, another very important thing is that since we in synchronized the instance, we can take a randomness to give different scale, maybe decrease the variances a little bit, and we can take a random rotation. Random rotation isn't very important for our icosphere, but it's very important for our Raspberry, as you see. Okay, so once we have this, uh, let's just change a random seed. You want to make sure that our sphere are not really intersecting to each other because it can create billions, billions of issues. Maybe turn on for some distance a little bit more. You do really do not want them to intersect. And looking at our Raspberry, we need to offset this Raspberry a little bit. So let's take a transform geometry. And let's turn down its scale, maybe 0 0.7. And I'm going to move that a little bit. So make sure that your Raspberry is inside the cage. And uh, before we do the binding, I want to remind you if you now you play this animation, you can see there is a certain glitch. This is because we baked this simulation before. And that's also why I hate working with simulation that uh, every time you change a parameter, you have to delete the bake and rebake it. So now we don't have the glitch. Everything is working like a kind of cloth. And yes. Let's uh, do our real work. That's I'm just going to apply the mesh deform. Actually, the most uh, initial idea is to test uh, this uh, dynamic space sampling, but the, the, there are some algorithm limitation which may, will not work good, or will not work well in this complex setup. It's very unfortunate, so we have to use modifier. Uh, and we take this icosphere as a target. And before you hit the button, you want to save your file because it may take a long time or a short time. You never know. So let's bind that. So I finished the binding. I don't know. I don't actually count how many times it actually spent. But then let's play this animation to see the result. Oh, Jesus Christ, you see, it's not a... <laughs> uh, for some reason, it's not uh, working too well because it's not uh, including the raspberry good enough. So now I have to start again. So now I finished the second round of binding. Let's play this animation again, and uh, I think it's working fine. Let's just unhide um, our icosphere. Yes, it's working fine. Yeah, we have really this kind of nice squishy effect, which will definitely be impossible if you do actual, uh, if you do actual simulation directly directly on these raspberries. It's a little bit unfortunate because we didn't really test out the self-collision part, but I expect it to work well. So the rest is really just about um, tweaking values, uh, dealing with uh, instances and other stuff. Uh, currently, there it, it's not a um, always perfect. I can expect many issues, but uh, it's a method which you can try. So I would say this is it. I hope you enjoy this video. I'll probably see you next time. Bye-bye.